creative friends, it's Gwen and I'm back with another scrapbooking process video. Today's share is for Coco Vanilla Studio and it is Throwback Thursday on the blog today. So I am going to be using my uh, collection of Wild at Heart. So this line is from 2017 and I do have quite a bit of stash left of it actually. Uh, quite a few embellishments. I've got a stack of flare buttons, I've got die cuts, I have two or three sticker sheets, uh, some have used uh, some, I think one of those is actually brand new untouched, and I have a bunch of the pattern papers from the collection as well. I'm also going to be working with a cut file. This one is from Cut To You and is called Spring Floral Banners. Now, um, you can see there that I've actually run short of the pattern paper. That one is called Patchwork, and I've run short of that. So I've actually, when I've gone to back my cut file, made sure that I had a plan for where my photos are going to go. So they're going to go right there and cover up that little gap in the um, cut file there that doesn't have any pattern paper behind it. And no one will ever know. So I am working with two photos uh, for this page. The first one there on the left, I have uh, stuck down just flat to the background. So I have a just a plain piece of pale pink cardstock for my background there. And the cut file is positioned flat on top of that. And then the left hand photo is also flat on top of the cut file. The photo to the right, I have uh, raised up with a little bit of foam tape. And I am going to make sure that everything's nice and square. Uh, yes, it's a floral design at the top there, but I didn't want any of my banner pieces at the bottom uh, not being straight. And then I didn't, obviously, I didn't want my photos to not be straight when they're being uh, viewed in line with the banners at the bottom there. Hope that makes sense. So now comes the fun part, pulling out the embellishments. I have fussy cut out a couple of the butterflies from the Mariposa pattern paper. So that one has this most divine watercolour blue on the B side and then all these butterflies on the A side. So butterflies for days in this collection, which I love, love, love. I've pulled out some other elements that are going to match with the colour tones that I'm going with uh, with my page. And I'm just going to start the audition process really. Uh, yeah, just picking pieces here and there and trying to get a bit of a plan uh, for the page. You may have noticed too at this point that the uh, cut file in the background there is not completely adhered down. That's because I wasn't sure at this point if I would want to um, slide some elements underneath those floral leaves. So I've just left it open for now. I'll get the plan together. I'll, I'll get an idea of where I'm going with the page. And then once I know for sure that nothing's going to want to sit underneath, then I'll glue them down. It's also at this point too that I am just looking for a few extra little pieces to add to the embellishments that I've already pulled out. So that I do end up using those two stickers there near the on the right hand side of the right photo. So that top little banner piece and then the butterfly that says beautiful underneath it, they're both from the accessory sticker sheets. Now I do also fuss with the title for the page here a little bit. I wasn't sure whether to add it up the top there or down the bottom here. And the reason I'm not sure, yeah, see, I didn't want to cover up those cute little shoes with the T. So I am sort of, is it, do I put it slightly to the right or do I have it slightly to the left down the bottom edge? But I do feel like it fits better at the bottom of the page here than up the top. I felt like it was a bit heavy for the top because it is quite a big element. It, it is quite, quite long. And I am thinking now about where my uh, visual triangle is going to be. So it's going to be those two points uh, above the right hand photo and to the right of the right hand photo and then down to the beautiful title. So yeah, just showing you there. So that's the plan. So now that I know where my visual triangle is going to be, where I want my three points to be, 
it makes it a lot easier to start building out my embellishment clusters because I know that they're going to be in those three areas and I'm limiting uh, the, a, the space that I have and um, yeah, B, like how big they'll be. So I, for me, I, I have mentioned it before, I don't like a lot of choices because too many choices means I have to audition everything, I have to trial everything, and then it takes forever to make the page. So anywhere in the process that I can limit my choices, it's actually a really good thing for me and the way that I create. Now you also might notice that I'm using the butterflies as a bit of an anchoring point for each of my clusters. So see how I've got the one on the right of the right hand photo and then I've got one above that and then they'll, they'll, be, they'll end up being one there on the left somewhere. And that will be a really um, easy visual cue for, um, to help lead the eye around the page. So it's at this point that I decide that I do actually want to use the hello part of the chipboard sentiment uh, from the chipboard sticker sheet. So yeah, I was going to go with just beautiful, but then I went, no, I, I want hello beautiful and have a little play with that up the top there, but it doesn't stay there. It actually goes in here. And I really like how that fills out that little bit of empty space that was between the BE in the word beautiful and the leaf there above it. There was a bit of an, I don't know, for me it felt like there was a little bit of a gap, a little hole. So the hello sort of nestles in there really lovely. And officially at this point, I'm deciding that nothing is going to get um, popped in underneath that uh, cut file. So I am going to glue that down. I'm using the Scotch quick dry adhesive in the fine liner bottle for that. So if you're wondering what glue I've used here, that's the one. And see how the hello just sits there really lovely. So I'm going to position that. I am using my T-square ruler for the title. It's a bit tricky because obviously the bottom of this title is not straight across and see the F, um, see the F, the bottom of the F there is quite a lot lower than say the I, which obviously it should be. So it was a little bit tricky to get it to um, line up straight, but again, you, you probably know by now that I do like um, things that are meant to be straight to be straight. And I'm a big believer that the devil's in the details, so it's worth um, taking a little bit of extra time and care to position things that are meant to be straight so that they are straight. So with the tile in place now, I feel like that butterfly on the left has has a, a, a home that's more nestled in and he's not just sitting out there on his own. And yeah, the, that whole like bottom left hand corner for me fits together so much um, more nicely than it did with just the word beautiful. So I am going to move on now and add in some sentiment stickers. So I'm using the chipboard sticker sheet for some of those. So the bottom one says, follow your dreams. So there's one on the left, one ends up on the left that says wonderful. And then there's a couple at the top say that say all smiles and pretty. But I'm mixing those with the uh, typed sentiments that are on the accessory sticker sheets. So for those, they're a little bit smaller and they are flat. So I add some double-sided 3D foam behind them just to raise them up a little bit. And I really like mixing and matching those with the thicker, heavier chipboard pieces. It's a really nice mix and a, and a nice blend and creates a lot of interest and dimension on the page. And yeah, it's really just a matter of auditioning all the pieces. And then once I find a happy home for them, locking them into position with either a liquid glue or some a foam tape. I did have someone ask me just recently about how I go about making my clusters and it's really a lot of things. I, I'm looking at the shape of elements, I'm looking at the colour of the element, um, even little things like that arrow, because it was pointing towards the right I really wanted it on the left hand side of my page. So if I had to, if I had to say um, what was like the first thing that I consider when using embellishments on my page, 
it will be to let the embellishment guide you. So there's no point trying to force a giant embellishment into a small position on your page because it's never going to look good there. Uh, if you're particular about which way your arrows go, like I, I actually often prefer my arrow to be pointing at something, so generally pointing at the photo or at a title. So for me, trying to force that arrow onto the right hand side of this layout was never going to work. So I knew that it had to go on the left. Same with if I had say three butterflies all together and I wanted to add another butterfly, well trying to add that butterfly really close to the other two, well that's probably not going to work either. So yeah, I, I let the embellishments guide me and I I try and use them in a way that supports what I've already got happening on the page. So that's my probably my first tip for how to create you know, embellishment clusters. So while I've been chatting away about embellishment clusters, I have finished up the page. I am just going to add one more element, which will be these enamel dots, which are from the collection. So I'm going to add them in three places and create like some small uh, little clusters there. As always, I'll leave you with some close-up images. And if you like the way that I scrapbook or the way that I chat about the way that I scrapbook, I would love it if you subscribed. Just click the uh, red button there in the bottom right-hand corner. And um, thanks for being here, my creative friends. I will see you in the next video. Bye.